Hi guys, welcome to epigenetic control of gene expression. You need to be able to state what is meant by epigenetics, describe the nature of the epigenome, explain the effect of epigenetic factors on DNA histones, explain the effects of decreased acetylation on histones, and explain the effects of increased methylation of DNA. So in terms of the specification, we are just here now. And we will be looking at the epigenetic control of gene expression in eukaryotic cells. So firstly, we need to recap on the uh, concept of DNA from year one. So how do we get from DNA to the chromosome? So here we've got a double helix DNA. Okay, This DNA uh, is associated with proteins called histones. The uh, DNA and histones making a complex called chromatin, so it's a more condensed form of DNA, and the most con uh, condensed form of the DNA, then it's called a chromosome. So, what is then epigenetics? Epigenetics is a heritable change in the function of gene without changing any sequence uh, of DNA bases. So how is it possible? We've got the epigenetic tags. So there are non-genetic factors that they can cause the organism's genes to behave in the specific way. So they can either express themselves or they can not. Okay, so the genes can become active or inactive in some situations. So uh, we will be looking at a few definitions here. So what is a histone okay so we've, uh, we've seen that on our starter picture histones those are proteins okay small basic proteins which are associated with dna in the chromatin of the eukaryotic cell you will not find them in the prokaryotic cell uh, so what do they do they uh, pack uh, and order the dna structure into uh, the nucleosome okay so that's where we can find it finally epigenome so epigenome those are those non-genetic uh, tags which cover dna and histones we will learn about them today and they can uh, change the shape of the dna and histones complex so what they can do they can make a dna and histones complex more condensed so closer to each other's or less condensed. So there will be gaps in between. So the gene that it will be here, the DNA will be then expressed. So epigenetic silencing then, it's the tag, epi, uh, it's an epigenome uh, that will keep inactive genes. So inactive genes that will be tightly packed, as you can see here on the picture. So none of those genes will be opened up. They're not going to be expressed. They will be tightly packed. So they cannot be read. They cannot be used for the process of protein synthesis. Okay. Or we can have instead active genes. So there are the genes that are going to be unwrap. So as you can see here, unwrap genes, and they can be easily uh, used for the process of protein synthesis. So they will be turned on. Right. So in terms of the being on and off, of course, there are different uh, different aspects of those processes. So when the gene is expressed, what we've said will be switched on. That means that the gene is available here for the protein synthesis to take place. So the transcription translation can take place. So at the end, we are going to produce our protein. But when the gene is not expressed, so the words it's switched off means it's wrapped up around the histones. So DNA is wrapped around the histones. So translation, transcription cannot take place and there is not going to be any proteins produced. So the DNA and histones complex, okay, of course, can have uh, two shapes. So it could be less condensed, as we can see on the picture here. And what we know about this, uh, that will be a weak association. So uh, DNA and histones complex will be less condensed. So the DNA 
can be used for the process of transcription. We are going to produce mRNA and we're going to produce our protein. So one more time here, gene is turned on. The other situation here, it's when we've got the DNA wrapped up tightly around histones. So in this situation, the gene of our interest, it's not expressed. So the transcription, translation cannot take place. Other words, production of mRNA is inhibited in this situation when the gene is turned off. So uh, in terms of the epigenetics, we've mentioned there will be attacks that can make the genes uh, available or they can make them uh, inaccessible. So we will be looking at the acetylation Okay, so addition of the acetyl group and methylation, the addition of methyl group, but also the, remo the removal of those groups and see how they can change the DNA and histones complex from more condensed to less condensed. Okay, so if, if we are looking at the process uh, of uh, protein synthesis and expression of the genes, we can regulate this by two processes, by increased acetylation of histones, so addition of the acetyl group to histones, that will make the complex less condensed, but also we can do that by removal of methyl group from DNA. So in both those situations, the transcription can take place and the gene will be active. When we then uh, don't want to produce any proteins and we uh, and uh, in the situation where the gene is turned off, we can achieve that complex, that really tight complex by decreased acetylation of histones, so by the removal of he, uh, acetyl group from histones or by increased methylation, so addition of methyl group to the DNA molecule. So those working in the opposite directions, there are different effects of those uh, epigenetic tags. So let's have a closer look at those. What do they actually do? So we will start with the acetylation, so addition of acetyl group to uh, histones, to proteins, okay? And exactly where it's going to be added to lysine amino acid of the histone. So we did say that it's going to make gene active, so the complex is less condensed, DNA uh, histones complex or chromatin is less condensed. So in this situation, we are going to uh, have production of mRNA and the gene is of course on. So you can predict now what will happen with decreased acetylation, so the removal of acetyl group from the lysine amino acid in make complex more condensed. So, uh, so they are uh, condensed and in this situation the gene is uh, not available so the uh, strong association causes no production of mRNA because the gene is off. So increased DNA methylation, you cannot predict, it's addition of methyl group to DNA molecule exactly to the cytosine base. What happens here once you add a methyl group to DNA molecule and make it more condensed? So if it's more condensed, of course, the synthesis is not going to take place. So the gene is off and mRNA is not produced. So the last one, decrease DNA methylation, same effect as increase acetylation. But here, what do we do? We remove methyl group from DNA molecule. So as we can see, the gene is active. So the process of transcription can take place and we will get our mRNA. Okay. So last thing, how we can use those epigenetic factors uh, to treat uh, specific diseases. Of course, we can use drugs to inhibit specific enzymes. So we can do it by acetylation of histones uh, or methylation of DNA. So we can target those specific affected cells and we can use uh, drugs in the, uh, in the manner to either uh, activate 
or disactivate that specific production of that enzyme uh, because enzymes are proteins of course and we can use it in the development of di 